In this video, we will be discussing few tips to take care of posterior capsular rupture because it is not the end but beginning of a new case. So these are the steps which have to be followed in this order. First step is to remove nucleus pieces, second step to clear vitreous and third step is to remove the cortex. Now uh, it is important to train your mind to be calm in this situation because otherwise your decision making will be not good. So, how to take the nucleus out? So, we have two options one is to through the scleral tunnel which is a better option, but for beginners maybe using corneal incision is easier because the learning curve is less and there will be less endothelial damage if the proper technique is used. Of course, you need to use sutures and there is a chance that there will be high degree of astigmatism later. So, once you gain experience with scleral tunnel it is better to shift to that. Now here the most important mistake done by beginners is that they make the incision same size of the nucleus, but you have to make it at least 1.5 times the size of the nucleus piece because remember nucleus piece is not flat, it has a volume. So you need a larger incision to take it out. Now do not use wire vectis like this. If you want to use wire vectis, use a sandwich method to take the nucleus out. While enlarging incision, use a sharp corneal scissor and make sure that you use plenty of dispersive OVD 2 percent HPMC to take all the pieces out. Now make sure that OVD is pushed from deepest part that means you have to go behind this nucleus pieces and then push the OVD. Always suture the incision before you start vitrectomy so you have a closed chamber because in corneal incision it is more likely to leak than when you have a scleral incision to take out the nucleus pieces. Make sure that the pupillary contour is round and there are no vitreous tags which are going into the incision before you finish the case. Now converting to a scleral tunnel is a much better option. The important thing is to give a subconjunctival followed by this subtenon, posterior subtenon anesthesia through infronasal site and that is make patient very comfortable when you are making the scleral tunnel and rest of the maneuvers. It is important to avoid too much of hypotony. Take time because this is not a routine scleral incision which you are doing. Uh, so take your time to make a nice scleral tunnel. Avoid button holing or too deep uh, incision. Uh, so you have a premature entry. So that has to be avoided and make a large scleral tunnel. Do not try to restrict the incision to 5, 5.5. Make 6 to 6.5 millimeter scleral incision. You can use this ball tip chopper or you can use two Sinsky method which is even better than using single hand. Never push this nucleus down by OVD or using the Sinsky. Always use the OVD under the nucleus and uh, push OVD from the deeper most part. Now just watch once this nucleus is uh, coming out of this bag what I am going to do is use 2 percent HPMC visco cannula that goes behind this nucleus and the distant most point of the nucleus and then start pushing the OVD. Do not push OVD over the nucleus pieces otherwise they may drop down. So this is a very important tip that you should go underneath these nucleus. This dispersive OVD does two things. It uh, brings out the nucleus pieces at the same time it separates the vitreous from the nucleus. So you do not have that much of vitreous prolapse when you are taking out the nucleus from the anterior chamber. So that is a good way to remove the nucleus which is still in the bag after PCR. Now how to remove the cortex? Once the nucleus pieces are out you have to remove the cortex. So uh, usually we use the same vitrectomy probe to remove the cortex. So important to make sure that the vitreous is cleared first and now you toggle between the IA cut and cut IA mode. So when you are trying to remove the cortex you are using IA cut mode where first the aspiration starts and uh, then the cutting starts. So good foot switch control is needed for doing this. Now there are some complications when you are using the vitrectomy probe to remove the cortex. So one important thing is remember this uh, vitrectomy probe has sharp edges. So if you touch the anterior capsule rim sometimes it may tear that anterior capsule rim like this and uh, if you hold the anterior capsule with this probe it may cause uh, dialysis because of that. So uh, be always careful while removing the cortex using the vitrectomy probe. Good advantage of vitrectomy probe is that whenever there is a vitreous strand coming in you can immediately cut it. Now second method is to use bimanual IA probe for uh, removal of this remaining cortex. This has to be used once you are thorough with the anti vitrectomy. So there should be no vitreous in the anterior chamber when you shift to this bimanual. 
Now important thing is if the biomanual catches uh, vitreous anytime you have to shift to vitrectomy again. The third method is to use dry aspiration. Now this is very useful when the anti-hyaloid is intact or once you have done the vitrectomy completely. So in dry aspiration you do not use the irrigation. So anti-chamber is maintained by the dispersive OVD. So for uh, it is a very good technique to have because this avoids sudden vitreous prolapse which may happen when you are using irrigation while doing the cortex removal. So this is also a nice technique to know. Now IL placement in sulcus. Should I do optic capture or not that has to be decided beforehand. Optic capture can be done if CCC is smaller than 5.2, ideal is 4.8. It is important because IL power has to be selected that way. If we are not doing optic capture then you have to reduce the IL power by 5%. And if you are going to do optic capture, use the same or emetropic IL power because the IL will be placed almost at the same level of PCIL. Now tips to place the IL in sulcus is always use three piece IL, don't use single piece hydrophobic IL's. Use adequate size of the incision, you should not be struggling while inserting the IOL. Always keep Sinsky below the IOL optic when you are inserting and op let it open in the anterior chamber rather than trying to push it into the sulcus directly because sometimes the haptic may just go into the bag and then it may land up on the retina if it goes through the PC rupture area. So always make sure that there is a Sinsky while inserting and uh, then open it in the anterior chamber and then you have to rotate or dial this IOL into the sulcus. If the pupil is small just do use iris retractors make sure everything is done under good visualization. Now tips for doing optic capture is that CCC must be centered and again maximum 5.2 millimeter. Remove OVD behind the IOL first or remove all the vitreous if there is any strand or there and then push one side at a time. Don't try to push from the center but push one side first and then the second side. And the end point is that the CCC anterior CCC should become spindle shaped. So that is the end point. Now still it is not completely captured. Now once I push it you can see the anterior CCC has become spindle shaped and that is the right way to have. Now checking for any residual vitreous with diluted tramsulone and uh, once the visco wash is done. One thing to remember is that if there is anterior chamber shallowing after doing optic capture it may just come out. So make sure at the end that optic capture is still there uh, if the AC collapses in between. So that is something you have to remember. Always make sure that wounds are watertight and if needed just suture these incisions that is better. Can we place IL in the bag after PC rupture? So let us think about whether we can do that or not. Now of course we know that 3 piece IL's or you know the large size non foldable PMMA IL's are the best and easiest. But why do we need to put IL in the bag? Because sometimes we have to use multifocal EDOF or TORIX which have to be placed in the bag. So we should know in which condition we can put it. So if the anti-hyaloid is intact and there is no vitreous then you can do a PCCC and place the IL in the bag that should be okay. But if the anti-hyaloid is ruptured you must do vitrectomy because sometimes surgeons what they do is that they push viscoelastic and push the vitreous back and try to place the IL in the back. Maybe on table it remains center but later you will find that vitreous will prolapse and the IL gets decentered. So make sure there is no vitreous in the AC. Now IL really requires only the area of optic haptic junction and the haptic to be supported. So if you have central PC which is absent you can still place IL in the back because the haptics and optic junction are properly supported. If there is a small peripheral rupture again you can place in the back but if it is very large peripheral PC rupture which is larger than the size of the optic you may have later decentration so avoid that. In case of again larger peripheral PC another option is to have optic capture where optic is in the bag where the haptics are in the sulcus. Avoid these springy IELTS like the plate haptics and three piece IELTS while placing in, in the bag if there is a PC rupture and no PCCC. These are better options to while putting in the bag. Now first case I am showing how to convert it to a posterior capsular axis. So if you have a small tear which is near the center and you can convert these torn edges into a PCCC. It is easier than what you think. So you can always try to convert it into a PCCC. Again if there is a vitreous prolapse make sure you clear all the vitreous. Look for those torn rexis edges 
where you can see the contour of the anterior CCC or the PCCC is not proper where the vitreous lies. So you can sweep under the incisions and uh, you can clear off all the vitreous from the chamber and make sure there is no vitreous strand going into the incision before you place the IOL. Now while placing the IOL in the bag again you have to follow the same principles. You try to keep the Sinski below the IOL so it doesn't open directly into the bag. Open it into the anterior chamber and then gently nudge this IOL into the bag. So once the IOL is in the bag make sure you use diluted Tramsulone and make sure there is no vitreous before you close the incision. Now if the PC tear is there and you are not able to convert it into PCCC but there is no vitreous maybe antihyloid is still intact then you can still place the IOL in the bag but just make sure that after you place the IOL in the bag don't use high botulite rather you just wash off the remaining visco in the anterior chamber by gentle flushing of the cannula. It may take 2-3 minutes but this avoids sudden deepening of the anterior chamber and enlargement of the PC tear. How to detect that anterior halide is intact? Once you inject OVD, you will find no visco goes into the vitreous cavity that indicates the anterior halide is still intact. So once you know how to deal with PCR, I think the surgery results are much much better and you don't have to worry about. So these are a few important tips about how to convert make a scleral tunnel, how to remove the nucleus from the bag and uh, you can use this ball tip chopper, you can use two Sinsky method to take out this nucleus from the bag. It's very important to do a good anti-vitrectomy with these settings and you will have a good outcome even after post-recapsular rupture. Thank you.